All right, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Mob Story Season 3, on the brink of a snowstorm blizzard. I came back home, had to conduct some business. Now I gotta get back out there on the streets. Ladies and gentlemen, come on in. Wipe the snow off your shoulders. Clean your feet on the rug. Throw some smoke in the atmosphere. I just lit up a little bit of lemon drop. Salute. Let's get right into it. Breaking news. From Noah Goldberg, by the way, of the New York Daily News. Let's get right into it. Mobster Anthony Gaspipe Casso, who murdered dozens and caught COVID-19 behind bars, dead at 78. A one-time Lucchese crime family underboss, who the Fed say took part in dozens of gangland rubouts, died behind bars Tuesday, two weeks after the Daily News reported that he was hospitalized with coronavirus. Anthony Gaspipe Casso, a mafia executioner turned rat, was 78. Casso caught COVID-19 at his Arizona federal prison in November, and his lawyers desperately filed a motion for compassionate release as he lay in a hospital on a ventilator, according to court filings. But federal prosecutors and a federal judge determined that some crimes are too heinous for compassion. All defendants sentenced to life in prison will, at some point, begin to succumb to one disease or another or suffer from failing health due to old age, federal prosecutors wrote in response to Castle's application for release. A judge agreed and rejected his application. Two weeks later, Castle died. Even before catching COVID-19, the mobster was in ill health, his lawyers said. He needed a wheelchair to get around, had prostate cancer, and was awaiting a heart operation and already had lung issues. Castle was doing time after pleading guilty to 11 counts of murder in aid of racketeering, which doesn't even account for half of the murders to which the feds say Castle confessed to. He rose through the ranks of the Lucchese family through the 80s, serving as captain and consigliere. He was an underboss in 1990, the year he was charged. Castle conspired to kill a federal prosecutor and a federal judge, though the plans didn't pan out. He was also part of the 1992 botched Brooklyn attempt murder of an innocent woman, Patricia Capazzalo, whose only crime was being the sister of an informant. She survived after being shot in her car in Bensonhurst. He killed rats and he killed mobsters he thought might become rats, and he killed mobsters suspected of being rats, then, after pleading guilty in 1994 in a wide-ranging racketeering case, Casso tried to become a rat himself. He spilled secrets to the feds, telling them about two NYPD officers who took bribes from Casso and informed him of coming indictments, as well as suspected informants. The info from the crooked cops helped Casso skip town and evade arrests from 1990 to 1993 as the feds launched a nationwide manhunt for him. He was finally caught in 1993 at a hideout in New Jersey. FBI agents snagged him as he got out of the shower wrapped in a towel. Caso was never put on the stance against other mafiosos after it was discovered that he repeatedly broke the law while imprisoned. He bribed prison guards and smuggled in alcohol. He also beat up another inmate. The last straw was when he provided false information, the Fed said. First... First of all, salute to Noah Goldberg. Again, Noah Goldberg, coming by the way of the New York Daily News. I'll leave the link in the article. Now, you know how we do with the rats. We always say, Disgracia. But I never disrespect the man that is, he's gone. He paid his dues. It is what he is. You let the dead rest. You capisce? Mob Story Season 3. Like, comment, share, leave a comment. Let me know what you're smoking on. And don't forget tonight. The 12 Nights of Ruckus, night four. Salute. See you then.